This is nice. This is very nice. You've opened so many doors for me and everybody here. Um, I thought I'd touch on something that's a little bit different uh, for your uh, workshops. And you and I spoke about it before in the past. But I didn't quite word it this way. Uh, um, you visit us and you teach us and we learn at whatever pace we learn. And, and uh, I, I was wondering, do you also visit other star systems with other life in the same way that you do here. Unimportant. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Another question is, are we prepared as humans for a visitation from very advanced beings if they should show up? No, and don't worry about it. They're not coming. Okay. <laughs> All right. You are the advanced beings. Okay. I've heard you talk about this before with other uh, people, and uh, you, you had the same answer, and I was looking for some sort of uh, confirmation, because I, I know I've seen things, I've seen uh, craft in the sky that very close that were not from here, um, and I'm guessing... Well, there is consciousness everywhere, but here's the thing. As you came into this time and space, you came with this clarity about who you are and what you were about. And there is a human mentality that for as long as you have been paying attention to each other and charting your historical attitudes and before, you have this mindset that goes something like, we're messing it up and someone must come to save us. And so often it's interpreted through some religious being and sometimes you get even more practical. You have to understand that everything that you see around you is an interpretation of vibration. And so there are a lot of realities that are being experienced by a lot of you, depending upon what your mindset is. But when you go to the absolute basis of who you are and you accept the pure positive energy being that you are and the perfection of who you are, who is always expanding, then you have to once you know that, let go of that vulnerable personality who is always looking for someone to save you. And once you get that basis laid, then you can become the pure positive energy being that you are, living life and asking for what's next by virtue of what you're living, with a full expectation of whatever it is flowing to you in a logical way that you can accept, you see. And so there's a lot of what some humans call fantasy, we're not calling any of it fantasy because whatever you can conjure can become some form of reality. We just want you to know who you really are and be who you really are and approach this life experience from who you really are and stop trying to put whatever's happening to you off on someone else. Be the creator of your own reality. You will never find satisfaction living life any other way. You will never find satisfaction by saying, well, we all need help and someone is coming to help us. You are the creator of your own reality. You have all kinds of ideas that flow to you and there's lots of co-creative stuff that is going on. And if you really want to nitpick, you can't even identify and we could not explain in a reasonable way where we come from. Because we're not from some other galaxy, we are consciousness. And if a human needs to pinpoint where we're from, or else we are not validated in our offering to you, then we would never be validated, because we can never identify a place in the galaxy from which this consciousness is flowing. You see what we're getting at? And so, it's so much more validating for you to quiet your mind as often as you can and tune into who you really are and live the important life that you live, not looking at your life as insignificant while there are other important things going on around there somewhere out there. And let the source energy who is in love with you and knowing everything about you offer impulses to you until you understand that it doesn't get bigger than you and your inner being and everything that your inner being is connected with. There's nothing bigger in all of the universe than your connection to your source energy. And there's nothing more important in all of the universe than you letting your life help 
form a desire within you and you keeping your eye on that desire while you tend to your energy and watch those vibrations turn to things. Nothing is more important than that. Yes, I, that's uh, one thing I wanted to also ask was I'm interested in so many things. I have a lot of interest. I have a lot of desire. It's just I can feel it just welling up inside me. I was hoping you could help me um, focus into what my purpose is how I can help expansion? Well, the answer to that question, you aren't going to like the way we give it to you, necessarily. But the answer to that question is, what's ringing your bells the loudest right now is the answer to that question. And that may change and it may evolve. Sometimes following a thought process on one interest is the path to the opening of another and another and another and another but whatever is calling you it's not just what's calling you it's what you're most ready to hear and as humans you want to say well I don't want it to be like that I want the most important thing to call me and never mind what I'm ready to hear and we say you can't leave that part out of the equation nor should you or should you feel bad about needing to let the path of least resistance take you here and there and here and there and here and there until you get to where you're wanting to be there is this perfect unfolding, a perfect unfolding for you. And when we say perfect, we're not just making up that word to make you feel better about yourself. It's a perfect unfolding for you. Because in the path that you may think is not the most direct route, there is insight and attraction that will give you more satisfaction. But humans want to diminish the satisfaction factor Never mind, don't give me the most satisfying route to where I want to be. Give me the most direct route or the most important route or the route that will get me the most accolade. And we say, it never works like that. Your inner being is always leading you to the whole of what you want. And your intentions are really varied. You are an uplifter and intend to always be that. But you are selfishly interested in having satisfying moment after satisfying moment. And so many humans don't allow themselves to satisfy their own quest for satisfaction. It's like you'll do it for someone else, but you won't do it for yourself. And until you have come to a place where you understand what satisfaction is and that satisfaction only comes from having a desire and moving in the direction of it, then you realize that all of this stuff that humans do as they take all the piles of manifestation and sort them into piles and evaluate them right and wrong and good and bad and yours and mine and then argue with each other about what piles are most to advantage and most valuable and so forth there are only two piles and those piles are those who are in this moment under the influence of source and those who are in this moment not under the influence of source and those move around a great deal too. Sometimes you're under the influence of source and sometimes you're not. But we know for sure that if you're not in the vicinity of your source energy, the question that we began with today was such an important question. What's the distinction between my inner being and my desires? They are one in the same because they are all in this vibrational reality that we are calling your vortex. Your inner being is there, the equivalent of everything that you desire. So when you sync up by feeling your way to what feels best to you, then you're in sync with the whole of you. And when you're in sync with the whole of you, that's the most satisfying experience that you could ever live in any moment in time, you see. Oh, the feeling of me being in sync with me. There's nothing more satisfying than that. And so we have some questions for you. Yeah. Do you believe that through your life experience with whatever you were living, whenever you were living it, that through the sifting and sorting of life as it came at you, that you were launching clear preferences and intentions and desires? Mm -hmm. Yes. And do you believe that you were consciously aware of all of them as they were happening within you? Hardly any of them. You weren't consciously aware of hardly any of them. You were more aware of what you didn't want than of what you did want. And so off they go. Now, in the variety of all of them, since they've been received by the thinker that is your inner being, the focuser who is your inner being, the focuser who law of attraction is responding to, who is your inner being, can you sort of get a glimpse of the melding of your desires and the way they all perfectly fit together? Can you get a sense of this forming of this evolved, expanded you? And now can you sort of feel a desire to be in sync with that expanded part of you, that expanded you. And can you acknowledge that sometimes you're right there and sometimes not? And sometimes closer and sometimes further. 
That's what we're talking about when we talk about those who are in these piles over here, two piles. One who, in this moment, not yesterday or not tomorrow, in this moment, in alignment with who you are or under the influence of your inner being or not. So if you're under the influence of your inner being and you get an impulse to leave your cabin and go somewhere and you have a conversation, when you're under the influence of who you really are, you have information coming to you from someone who understands everything about you, who knows where you stand in your physical form, in your physical manifestation, in relationship to everything that's in your vortex, who is already a cooperative component, who law of attraction has already gathered everything. And all you got to do is stop criticizing yourself or worrying about something. All you got to do is be in that place of allowing, in that receptive mode and willing to trust the process and follow the impulse as it comes. Yes, I am pretty good at uh, um, worrying and doing things for other people, not for myself. Well, you've learned that from other humans around you. You're doing fine. You're doing fine. You're figuring it out as you go. But there's a, another way of looking at this, that once you accept the wholeness of who you are, and once you get into that awareness of what satisfaction feels like and what less than satisfaction feels like, so that you are reaching for the most satisfying thoughts, then when a solution comes to you, you feel the exhilaration of it. And when someone questions that clarity that came to you, you feel the irritating tug of that. You know what you know, what you know, what you know, what you know. And what we want to say to all of you is, if you practice being tuned in, you'll get so you don't second guess what it feels like to be tuned in. You'll say to anyone else, hey, I got this. I'm tuned in. This is the way I'm playing this one out. No one can talk you out of your connection when you've practiced it and it is happening firmly in the moment, you see. And others may say, well, I've had a lot of experience with this. And you may say, but this is new into all of the universe. None of us have ever been exactly here before. Well, just focus upon that feeling of satisfaction. And let's put some other descriptive words around the feeling of satisfaction. Feeling of satisfaction, sometimes it feels like ease and flow. Sometimes it feels like off-the-wall bouncing enthusiasm. Sometimes it feels like indescribable clarity. Sometimes it feels like knowing that is so strong that it takes your breath away. The feeling of what you know and the feeling of clarity is so strong that it is the unequivocal feeling of absolute knowing about something. And so you taste it and you know it. And your work these days is to recognize what feels like that and what doesn't. What feels like love and what doesn't? What feels like clarity and what doesn't? What feels like certainty and what doesn't? Until you've got a bead on that, you see. And then it's not difficult to stop trying to please others. Some years ago, Jerry and Esther were in Texas and they went into the little town close to where they lived and the Cibolo Creek was over its banks and the post office was surrounded by water. So they couldn't pick up their packages and home they went. And Jerry said, we should call Pat and Lawrence, friends in San Antonio, who have a thousand acre ranch in San Antonio and the Cibolo Creek runs right through their ranch. We should let them know that the Cibolo is over its banks here and headed for them. So Esther called Pat and said, the post office is surrounded, the creek's over its banks. And Pat said, thank you. Got right off the telephone. They went to their lower pastures and removed their cattle and equipment from the pasture where the Cibolo Creek was running through. Mm -hmm. And later that day, they called and said, thank you. So nice to have a friend upstream. Mm -hmm. And that's what you have with your inner being. You have a friend upstream, someone with broader perspective and someone who unequivocally knows every subtle nuance of who you are and what you want.